Hey guys, it's uh, Paul from Bullies Painting Parlour, I hope you're well, and uh, I'm a little bit excited because welcome to Lesson 1, The Anatomy of an Airbrush. So, what you can see before you are three of my inverted commas girls, these are three of my Harder and Steenbeck um, airbrushes. Before we start looking at these, and I'll remove some of them to avoid the complication in a minute, before we start looking at these airbrushes, what I wanted to do is cover off a couple of pieces of really basic information. So there are two types primarily of airbrushes that you will see all over eBay or the shops or wherever you go to buy them. And apologies if you already know this, but I'm going to uh, approach this entire video series as the viewers don't. So you will see uh, airbrushes advertised as single action or dual action airbrushes. What's the difference? It's really very simple. A single action airbrush, when the trigger is pulled, which is this piece up here, uh, produces paint and air. A dual action airbrush allows the user to produce either air or paint and air. And that sounds really pretty basic, but it makes a massive difference in terms of the level of work that you can do with an airbrush. Now, you can, for very basic work with modelling, use a single action airbrush. What it doesn't allow you to do is regulate the airflow via trigger pressure that is forcing the paint out. And therefore, it's a bit limited when we're working with something as fine as we are in terms of miniatures. So, again, all of my recommendations are purely my own personal recommendations, but if you're going to own an airbrush, you're going to buy an airbrush and you're going to use an airbrush, you want to be using a dual action airbrush. And we'll go through dual action airbrushes now. I'm not going to cover off single action airbrushes because I don't recommend you use them for miniatures. So all of mine are uh, dual action airbrushes and we're going to learn everything about them from start to finish. So... First off, before we go into too much more detail, there are numerous airbrush brands out there. And if you look on eBay, you will find numerous cheap airbrushes made um, all over the world. And you'll find airbrushes starting from as little as six or seven quid and running up to eye-watering sort of 250, 300 pound mark. The, the, the price tag of the airbrush does not nece necessarily mean the quality of the airbrush to the user. I know that's ridiculous, but it is true. However, it's my assertion that instead of starting cheap and learning, in inverted commas, how to use an airbrush, you're better off investing a little bit of money initially. And with videos like this, learning how to use that airbrush productively, you can do it really quickly. I can take a novice student from having never touched an airbrush to be able to glaze paint and blend and do all sorts of things, including strip and clean an airbrush within one eight hour lesson. So I don't think you need weeks or months of working with a cheaper airbrush to be able to do it. So, when you're buying an airbrush, um, the primary brands are Iwata, uh, Badger and Hodder and Steenbeck. I've used them all and my honest advice is that Hodder and Steenbeck, um, a German company, make the best airbrushes in the world bar none. I own four of them and I own four of them because they are simply fantastic. They are fantastic because the quality of the engineering is typically German. Um, and is phenomenal. The The machinery of the airbrush is brilliant. And more importantly of all, they are idiot-proof. The Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes are the Kalashnikov AK, AK-47 of the airbrush world. Um, I am pretty sure you could throw them in the ground for six months, take them out and use them. They strip down in a particularly commonsensical way. You can strip them to clean them without taking apart the entire rear of the body. They are a dream to work with. If you are a brand new novice airbrusher, for the love of God, spend a little bit extra money and buy yourself a Harder and Steenbeck airbrush. The cheapest Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes uh, are the Ultra range. They use exactly the same technology as all of the others. They are just a little bit less refined. But for a novice and harder in Steenbeck Ultra can uh, prov provide excellent results. I would personally recommend that you go, uh, you spend a little bit more money, 140, 130, 120 quid if you can find them on eBay or wherever, um, and you buy yourself a middle of the road harder in Steenbeck airbrush, which would be 
Um, one of these, which is an evolution. Now mine's got some mods and stuff on it, or one of this is one of my two evolutions. Um, but evolutions are an incredible airbrush, and the evolution silver line in particular is a, a beautiful airbrush. So let's look at um, the myth and the noise around airbrushes and all the coatings and everything that you see and you hear about. So airbrushes come with a variety of nozzle sizes. So when you're looking at them on eBay or on a website, you will see it states next to it with a 0.2 or a 0.3 or a 4 or a 6 or whatever size needle. And the larger the point decibel, the larger the size needle. And the larger the size needle, the more paint that it will chuck out of its aperture. And if we go back to the fact that this is primarily based uh, and aimed at a miniature painting audience, why the hell would you go big? So uh, as a miniature painter, you do not need anything bigger than a 0.3. You should be using a 0.2 needle. And uh, if anything, if you can uh, afford to justify the little bit extra money, you should be using a 0.15 needle. So a 0.15 needle is the smallest and thinnest needle that you can get on an airbrush. And I use 0.15s for anything from tanks and demons right the way through to dragons and castles. So the, the size of a finer airbrush is, is irrelevant. People shy away from finer needles because they clog easier. And they clog easier because the person using the airbrush doesn't know how to stop it from clogging and how to clean it, which hopefully we should cover off in this series and therefore removing that entire concern from any users. So what I am aiming for you to do is to be able to um, use a, say, 0.2 airbrush effectively and clean that 1.2 airbrush. I'm not... Uh, advocating you buy numerous airbrushes you don't need to at this point in time if you're going to buy an airbrush buy a dual action 0.2 airbrush if you've got any common sense you will buy yourself an evolution ultra or an evolution silver line um, from harder and steambeck okay so this rather fancy looking beast in front of me is a custom harder and steambeck infinity airbrush so um, once you get to being a particularly prolific airbrush user and a tart like me you're able to purchase uh, well you can do it anyway from from day one but if you're a tart like i am you can get yourself a custom airbrush made by harder and steambeck and the, the service from these guys is unbelievable they are incredible um, so here you can see my studio airbrush, which is a Harder and Steenbeck dual action, uh, two in one infinity. Um, and that sounds like a lot of waffle, but the reality is a two in one means that the airbrush you buy comes with two sets of needles and two sets of nozzles. So here you can see how your equipment will arrive. There's a nozzle at the back here, a nozzle guard, and inside there you can see a needle, and that is a 0.4 needle. I've never used a 0.4. I never intend to use a 0.4. Every one of my bloody airbrushes comes with a spare 0.4. I don't ever have an intention to use any of them. They just look nice to have in my Tarty airbrush tray. Being a Ponce, all of my airbrushes are stored in pick and pluck foam in hard cases. And I just pull out the spaces to make myself feel like a I don't know, sniper or something. So we're going to start <coughs> for the basic anatomy using the simplest airbrush I have. Uh, from Harder and Steenbeck, which is an evolution. And before we do that, I'm going to return it to factory spec because on the back of this evolution, there is a modification which I've added. So let me just put this factory spec back on. So if you buy a Harder and Steenbeck evolution silver line or any kind of evolution, you will get this airbrush come through to post in its own little box. And it's really rather lovely. It's covered in fingerprints, but the build quality, you can tell when you touch it straight away, is it's a very good piece of kit. So what we're going to do is run through the external anatomy of an airbrush. So at the front here you have the, the front body, at the top here you have the trigger, down here you have the air regulator, up here you have the paint cup and the paint cup aperture, at the front here you have the nozzle guard and a whole load of gubbins hidden underneath, at the back here you have uh, the needle adjusts and the depth gauges. So if you look at the bottom of an airbrush, you can clearly see there is a, an aperture for an air hose to pump um, extremely high pressure air or low pressure air, depending on what you're using, through. So let's look at the airbrush itself. We'll take it apart and you'll see why I recommend Harder and Steambecks because they are just so simple to strip down and use. So the front section here, the nozzle guard. The nozzle